Hello everyone, welcome to day 15 of the 30 days of testability challenge. So you're probably expecting I'll be up to day 20 or 21, I think it was supposed to be today, but uh, life has got in the way as it does, but um, soldiering on and I am pleased uh, to be here with my friend uh, Anka today. Uh, hi Anka. Hi. I'll get you to just uh, maybe introduce yourself to everyone if you, if you don't mind. Sure. So James already mentioned I'm Ankur. Uh, I'm a developer. I worked with James a few months back, and then Jim, James left, and then I decided there's nobody to attach my code, so I left. <laughs> and I guess you're now working at different companies. And over time, I've done a bit of different things. So worked in games, worked for financial companies, worked for an email company now. So all different industries. So yeah, it's been fun. Cool. Um, yeah, we still get to spend time together like this though, right? So, you know, it's good. <laughs> yeah. The reason I've got... Yeah, I need to get to test my code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, the reason I've got Anchor on the call today is that today's challenge is to find and share a, a blog post about testability. And I spent a bit of time trying to think, you know, how could I make this a bit more interesting? And I found Anchor's blog, which is anchorshield.com. Um, mm -hmm. And a post that he's got on there, uh, actually I'll share my screen because this is going to be a screen sharey one. A post that he's got on his blog about uh, using Postman to test IX, IX endpoints or AJAX endpoints. I don't even know which AJAX endpoints. AJAX endpoints. Mm -hmm. IX is the football team. And so I get mm -hmm. this up, yep. Um, so how do you use Postman to test AJAX endpoints that are protected with an anti-forgery token? So what that means, and Anka, you might be able to sort of mm. guide me a bit here. When we're building a, a page using, what are we, MVC and Razor, Razor yeah. pages, is that right? Yeah, this one's in Razor pages, but you could have it in MVC, you could have a spa. Yep. The, like. Uh, the concept remains the same. This one's just MVC because it's the easiest. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have something like, where can I see the uh, the form here? So what that what this form has on it is a, a hidden input with a a token, which is to prevent cross site forgery going on, right? Yeah, so it's basically it prevents somebody putting in a post action from a different form. So let's assume that you're submitting this form. Somebody gets you to go to a different website and they say, change my email because I now know the post credentials. I've got everything. Yeah. Um, there's no way to validate it. So this is one of the uh, tools in the toolbox to basically make your application more secure. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And that, that cross site forgery request stuff is, is one of the OWASP top 10, right? Like it's a pretty, yep. pretty um, uh, well known security uh, feature that we need to, to protect against. So that's the reason we have these things here. Now, Anka and I were in a situation, I'll stop sharing so you can see, uh, see us talking for a bit. The um, Anka and I were in a situation, must, it must be more than a year ago, we were testing a feature. And Anker was building these uh, AJAX endpoints, uh, but we, but getting the front end spun up was was a lot of effort, and we wanted to test without having to spin that whole front end up. We just wanted to test the endpoints were working, right? Yeah. Yep. And so we thought, well, maybe we can just use Postman to hit the uh, the endpoint and bypass all of this stuff. Um. So what? Anchor has spun up for me here. Actually, I'll share this again uh, so you can see it. There's a really basic um, page with a, with a token on it. So just for demo purposes, I put something in this uh, field. Hello, Anchor. Submit it. And when I submit the form, it just pops up on the page. Right? It's, yep. it's, it's pretty yep. basic. Yeah, so like the situation which we ran into is uh, our login page basically had this request entry forgery token, right? So to reach anything else, you had to somehow log in to get your credentials. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, so 
that's a pretty basic use case where you'll run into this and where it's actually helpful because then you can start caching your credentials in postman yep. and start doing a lot more interesting stuff yes yes um so we thought we'd try and test this using postman but what happens is and i'm just gonna this is kind of the end result so i'm just gonna uncheck this box to sort of simulate what it looks like um and just to get this, so the base URL is just pointing to my local host. If I fire off this request to that endpoint, it returns a 400. And it's returning that 400 because uh, it's been blocked for security reasons, right? We don't have that token. We can't do stuff on the page. Um, which is good. It means security works. But for, for testing, it's painful. So what we can do is we can send that token along with the payload but the token changes every time we load the page so it's complicated uh, if i bring that up again and just sort of look at that token so you'll see that sort of ends in rv0 refresh the page yeah the token that value has changed that token that token changes every time we load the page so we can't just like paste the token in here and use that every time um, it gets complicated. And so Anka went away and did some sort of digging and found that we can actually build a pre request script that will get that token for us every time. Um, and it looks like this. Yeah. Before that, I just had a couple of manual steps, but so that I could run it locally and I could test it locally. But the issue was that how do I get it to James to test? Right? Because I have to put that code in production and I don't want to disable security. Mm. So even though I can test it locally, we can warm it. There's no way to get that second set of eyes and have that proper testing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They, I mean, yes, that's the other way around, right? It's just disable security, but, um, you know, that, that creates, <laughs> that creates, <laughs> yeah. So we'll step through this pre-request script. It looks a little bit complicated, but it's not really right it's it, once you know what the things are it's it's pretty cool and pretty useful yeah so like the script is basically it's like your uh, web scraper right and postman gives you a pretty handy tool uh cheerio so it basically bases it off cheerio so you can write your custom scripts yep so, so cheerio just passes the the html essentially is that right yeah it passes the html it, basically you can use it to scrape any web page which is what we're doing here essentially yeah so it's what it's doing is it's sort of it's it's sending off a request to that page um, using Cheerio to pull out the body of that, that HTML, finding our token on the page, um, and then saving that as an environment variable, uh, so that when we send this request, we've got that token and we know it's correct, and then we can use, you know, we can use that to do other stuff. Yeah. So, what, Oh, sorry, go. So the reason this really works is because when you do that get request to visit the page, you already know what the verification token is, right? And it's going to be there for that uh, time. Mm -hmm. So we can use it. If it was being generated later, then yeah, this would be a much harder problem. Right. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, so if we just try that, so I've, I've got the token here and I've got the message like, Hello again, Anchor. So that's the, the messages is populated in the, in the mm -hmm. on that page. Send that off. This time we get a 200 OK because it knows what the token is. And if we scroll down, uh, we can see this, this is just literally the contents of the HTML page. And you can see that it's printed out the message on the page so that we know it's, it's worked. Um, and that's really it. But what that does is that enables us to do a whole lot of stuff without um, you know, Anka having to go to, to pain is to get me to be able to test it. Uh, so from a, a stance of testability, I guess, uh, this enables us to do a whole lot more without a whole lot of overhead. Is that a fair way to, to sum it up? Sure. Like, I think the, um, what I really like about doing these and having this, uh, uh, not just this, but similar things as your concept is now you're decoupling the front end and the back end. So you're decoupling your client from your APIs. Yep. Right. You don't need a client to really test it. 
and once you're getting an error so let's say we don't have this postman collection right yeah. and i build the feature i give you the feature as a back end developer now once the front ends come and you find the error how do you figure out where the error was yeah right yeah. Now, it could have been on the front end piece it could have been in the back end piece and now it's a much harder problem to reason about yes yeah and so and one of the things that's been coming up as we do this testability exercise is decomposability so mm -hmm. breaking down features into parts so that you know where a thing is happening and 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 this is is a tool in doing that as well right so yeah we, yeah yeah so like if you can test your back end and front end separately that just makes it easier to say yes my back end and api is all stable so if something's gone wrong yep the front end's bad and you can say I'm a backend developer because I'm the same big rock. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so that's it. It's 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 pretty basic, but it's it's a useful tool and it, and it unlocks a lot of powerful, powerful stuff. Um, and yeah. Andrew has a, a lot of other stuff like that on his blog. So uh, so go and check it out. Um, <laughs> sure. you, I hope you've got Google Analytics set up to to watch your metrics spike now. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yeah. Um, but, sorry, go. Yeah, so one thing I'd like to add is like the reason I came across this problem and why I solved it is because I ran into it. And right? mm -hmm. I'm sure James was having it from much earlier, but unless somebody is coming to talk to you about it, you won't really know and yep. you won't feel it as a pain point. Yeah. So I'd encourage all your listeners or followers or watchers to if you start having to jump through hoops to actually test go talk to a dev and see if it can be done it's yeah you know it's maybe a day's work or something and you it will just increase the benefit and shorten your the time you're taking to test things yeah yep yep exactly one of the things sort of that that came out in the last conversation i had with with uh, vincent was that um the, the time between something being ready to test and being able to test it it just sort of indicates how testable or not testable something mm -hmm. is um and it, and it reduces the amount of sort of enjoyment you have from it as well like the more you know we're chugging away at setting things up before we can actually test it, it you know makes it much less interesting to do uh, sure. yeah, yeah i appreciate that point and and, and it, you know it's really easy um to just go and talk to a developer yeah uh, like and i'm probably being a little how should i put selfish in this uh, regard also because <laughs> let's say i've built the feature right mm -hmm. i've said it according to me it's done i've moved on yeah and if it's being tested after a week or 10 days i have to do a context switch and try to remember what i did right yep so it's not it's not just from a testing perspective where it's really helpful yep just that getting that faster feedback just means that it's just easy to get it fixed faster um yep yep exactly you don't have to go oh geez what was i working on 10 days ago um, and this is a problem I've had in other companies I worked where, you know, you'd go find a bug, go back to the dev and, the, you know, they had moved on with their life. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's a really good point too. Yeah. You know, and then it probably goes down the priority list and, yeah, we don't really care about it. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure, like, as a developer, it bugs me. I'm sure that the tester it bugs you as well that a bug's not being fixed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. Cool. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you want to add? Sort of. No. I'm... All right. Cool. Well, um, I hope that has been interesting and useful for for anyone watching. Um, thanks for your time. Thanks Andrew, for joining me. It's great to to catch up with you again. Certainly. And I'm sure we'll do it again soon. Yes. Next time, just has to be over a coffee or a beer. That has um, just been my laptop, so you can test things. Yeah, we have <laughs> we do all those things. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, cool. all right. Thanks, mate. All right.